Hey, what's up guys? New year finally kicked in. Bitcoin continues to consolidate while adoption increases. In this video, we'll take a look what is going on around Bitcoin market, then billionaire investor Ray Dalio will explain why Bitcoin might reach $260,000 a coin in the future. Guys, I know you don't like paying taxes and sometimes we can legally avoid them. If you already invested in crypto, you should try tax-free crypto. Welcome to iTrust Capital. iTrust Capital is a retirement account provider that allows you to invest in crypto and physical precious metals. On this platform, you can trade a wide range of cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, Dogecoin, Shiba Inu, and many more. Unlike any other crypto platform, if you invest in Bitcoin, for example, with iTrust Capital and Bitcoin goes to 100k, you can sell it and keep all the profits. No taxes. This platform gives you 24-7 trading access with no set of fees nor monthly fees. To keep your crypto safe, iTrust Capital uses military-grade secure storage with Coinbase custody with over $320 million insurance policy. If you are a skeptical investor like I am, just look at the customer's reviews. Reviews speaks for themselves. 4.6 out of 5 stars on Trustpilot. If you are a new customer, now you can receive $100 free Bitcoin if you sign up with the link in the description box below or go to itrust.capital slash aimstone. Ok guys, let's take a look at the Bitcoin chart. Nothing really new we see regarding the Bitcoin price. As of the time this recording, Bitcoin is trading slightly over $47,000. Not a terrible start for 2022. It has been exactly 13 years since the first block known as Genesis block has been mined by Satoshi Nakamoto. So, happy birthday Bitcoin. January 3rd is not only Bitcoin's birthday, it's also a proof of key day. On this day, Bitcoiners withdraw all the BTC from crypto exchanges to verify if the crypto exchange is indeed legit or not. If an exchange won't let you withdraw your Bitcoin, then it might be a red flag. Personally, I do not keep too much crypto on exchanges. Most of my crypto savings is in cold storage. Here we have an interesting predictions for 2022 from El Salvador President Nayib Bukali. 2022 prediction on Bitcoin will reach 100k. That's very likely. Bitcoin just needs to double in price. Two more countries will adopt it as a legal tender. That would be cool. Those countries would be either from Africa or South America or both, where you see high inflation rate will become a major electoral issue in the US election this year. Probably. Bitcoin City will come as construction. Can't wait to see Bitcoin City. Volcano bonds will be oversubscribed, most likely. Huge surprise at the Bitcoin conference. There is always surprises in the conference. Our homeboy Peter Chief also had some predictions in 2020. I'm just talking about last 2.5 years. I was wrong not to buy Bitcoin 8 years ago, but anyone still holding it was wrong not to sell it 2.5 years ago. Gold will likely make new all-time high in 2020. Bitcoin won't ever come close. Mm, let's see. This post was made in mid-2020. At least Peter Chief admitted that he was wrong not to buy Bitcoin many years ago. 2.5 years ago that would be in mid-2017. Back then Bitcoin was under $10,000. Bitcoin now is more than 4 times higher, so you are wrong again, Peter Chief. This is what many people think happened in 2021. Yes, Bitcoin reached new all-time high and some investors bought at $69,000 or so. But since then BTC retraced by more than 30% and those investors seems like they bought the top. But wait, 2022 comes around the corner and Bitcoin continues to rally. That 6 k is just another price that will look like a bargain as the time passes by. The trick is, even if you buy at the top, you have to hold it. Here we have a Bitcoin rate of returns from 2010 until the end of 2021. Initial few years, Bitcoin returns was insane. It was in thousands of percent. 2014, we had a bear market where BC closed the year by almost 60% down. Then, in the next three years, we had another rally, specifically 2017. In 2017, Bitcoin gained more than 1,300%. I remember that year very vividly. The hype behind Bitcoin and altcoins was insane. In 2018, Bitcoin went into the bear market, and Bitcoin finished the year by minus 73%. Since then, we had another decent rally and consolidation. 2022 should be very interesting. Many people think that we are doomed for a negative year. Sure, it's possible but I think we will continue to rally, since the Bitcoin cycle is different than the previous two. Here we have another interesting Bitcoin data. Bitcoin yearly low. 
Sorry guys, this chart is measured in euros, not in dollars. Euro is like 13% more valuable than dollar, but it won't make a huge difference in terms of comprehension. From 2012 until 2017, we see a nice uptrend momentum in Bitcoin yearly lows. It started with 4 euros in 2012 and steady increase until 700 euros in 2017. Then we had a nice spike and momentum continue for the next 3 years. BTC yearly low it started from 2800 euros in 2018 and finished at 4400 euros in 2020. It's hard to believe that less than 2 years ago you could have picked up BTC under $5000. Since then we had another massive spike. In 2021 year's low was at 25000 euros, which would be equivalent to $28000. That price was exactly a year ago in early January 2021. Another thing I wanted to point out that every single year Bitcoin made new highs. We never had that where Bitcoin had higher and the next year was lower. It never happened. Here's another funny chart. It compares Bitcoin price to new COVID cases in the United States. Surprisingly enough, charts indeed look very similar. But of course, the time frame is very different. We know that new cases is likely to increase, so is Bitcoin price. Once again, there is no correlation, but it's still interesting to compare these two charts. Here we have a very cool chart from Willy Woo. It represents Bitcoin price action on the top and the Bitcoin net flow in the bottom. In this case, the orange line represents number of wallets with at least 1000 BTC, and the blue line represents number of wallets with at least 1 Bitcoin. If you have less than 1 BTC, you are officially a shrimp, and if you have 1000 BTC, you are officially a humongous whale. Moby freaking dick. Notice that the whales were selling some sets in between March and July of 2021. This is when Bitcoin reached the top, then it dropped in half. Then they were buying in August and September. Then they sold in November and December and it seems like they start accumulating Bitcoin once again. Could this mean we could have another rally just around the corner? Very possible. On the other hand side, number of shrimps continue to consolidate sideways. Shrimps do not have that much power to move the market like whales do. Here we have a very interesting chart. It represents Bitcoin Entity Adjusted Dormancy Flow. Dormancy Flow describes the average number of days each spent coin had remained dormant before it was moved. When Dormancy Flow isn't low, it means nothing really exciting is going on in the market. Especially when this metric is in near on this green zone, it's a perfect time to buy more Bitcoin. Remember, the best time to buy Bitcoin is done when Bitcoin is an all-time high. The best time to buy Bitcoin is when it's very low when the market is fearful, when people are selling. Currently, adjusted dormancy flow is near this green area, which is the great time to stack more sets. Right now, we are at very similar level where Bitcoin was in summer of 2021 after 55% correction. Back then, Bitcoin was under $30,000. It's also quite similar to the corona crash where Bitcoin was under 5000 bucks. On contrast, when dormancy flow increases and surpasses this line, this is when you can take some chips off the table. Personally, I'm not taking nothing off the table regardless of what happens to the dormancy flow. And last, if I really, really need the cash. My strategy is simple. Buy Bitcoin when market presents right opportunities and never sell it. Now, let's take a quick look what billionaire macro investor Ray Dalio has to say about Bitcoin's future. Let's take a look. And there's something almost religious about, about the, the zealotry surrounding cryptocurrencies. And so, I... I I, I sense from your writing, both in the book and the statements that you've made um, on LinkedIn and elsewhere, that that you're trying you're trying to be somewhat nuanced and polite about this. But you you're I'm not try I'm ever trying to be polite. Ah, but but, <laughs> but you're not. I mean, you've said that you've said that you have a small, somewhat negligible stake. You've said that gold you still regard as a safe store storehold of wealth and a, a timeless and universal alternative cu currency at a time when so many other people are saying that actually Bitcoin has become digital gold and, and gold is useless. Could you, could you put a little nuance on, on that and just also give us a sense of, of whether the speculators on, on cryptocurrencies are kind of lambs to the slaughter or whether it's a sensible hedge in a world where currencies are being devalued? Um, just to be clear, I'm trying to, I'll answer your question. But um, I'm not trying to uh, be politically correct or misstep or, or do anything like that. That's not, I, very few people have accused me of being that yeah. way. 
I, um, I'm, uh, I'm uh, straightforward, but um, issues are not as black and white as people want to do, do it. They want me to be either a raging bull or a bear and, you know, uh, that kind of thing and the circumstances. So here's what I think about them. Um, I think it's, uh, um, it's very impressive that this concept was programmed something like 10 or 11 years ago and has uh, um, stood the test of time, meaning it hasn't been hacked. It hasn't, um, um, uh, the, the competition has been relatively modest. In other words, some of the risks in the earlier period are, you know, would this thing break down, ha be hacked? Would, um, would competitors to Bitcoin come along? And how do I know the next one? Because everything in the world gets old. And so it, you know, and there's a better competitive alternative. That's just the nature of evolution. And so those kinds of things, and then the ad um, um, adoption of it, um, in other words, uh, and, and it has pros and cons. I would say uh, gold um, uh, right now, the, because the supply of Bitcoin is known and limited, uh, we can look at its comparison. And uh, Bitcoin now is worth about uh, $1 trillion. Um, and the total crypto is worth, um, uh, cryptocurrencies are worth about two and a quarter trillion dollars, roughly. Um, but let's take Bitcoin. Um, whereas uh, gold that is not held by central banks and not used for jewelry is worth about uh, 20, uh, excuse me, 5 trillion. So that 20% of that is, um, is, is uh, Bitcoin, let's say, versus um, uh, the other, uh, gold. And so when I look at that, um, I keep that in mind because I think over time, that which will be called, let's say, inflation hedge assets are probably likely to do better. That's why I'm not favorable to cash and those types of things. But also that, but the, it becomes a market share. Now that is what I've just given you is what I think about it, but it doesn't lend itself to sound bites. So it, it, you know, people say, um, uh, "What do you think about that? Do you love it or hate it?" And it's just more complicated than that. Ray Dalio is very impressed regarding Bitcoin that it has not been hacked in the past 13 years. Ray Dalio also compares Bitcoin to gold that is not held by central banks and it used in jewelries. He said that the remaining market cap of gold would be around $5 trillion. Bitcoin is under a trillion bucks. So I think, reading between the lines, Ray Dalio believes that Bitcoin will reach that market cap value. Bitcoin equal to $5 trillion in market cap, that would put a single coin at around $260,000. Let me know what you guys think. Will Bitcoin ever reach $260,000? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below, smash that like button and subscribe for more videos.